Hello, this is Dr. Alex Vernon. And uh, this is a little video to try to enhance your understanding of some basic descriptive statistics. Now I'm gonna start out with a couple of brute force calculations, doing things the hard way, then I'm gonna show you the easy way. Now one of the things about doing it the hard way is you see how everything moves. And uh, you'll notice I'm not real fancy with my symbols because I've used X bar instead of X with the bar over it as it should be but uh, most of you will get what the formula should be and I'll pop up a little help file to, to show you some before we're finished. Now X bar is the symbol for sample mean. So what I'm going to do with this set of data is I'm going to calculate the sample mean or the average and I'm going to just type this in A V E R A G E and I will select the average the data and then close the parentheses and it will calculate the average. Those who have had my basic statistics class will recognize the numbers. Um, N is a symbol for sample size. I'm going to consider these to be a sample of data. I could also go into insert function and to get a sample size what I'm interested in is actually what they refer to in, in Excel as count. So I'm going to click on count, hit OK, and then select these data and count the number of observations that we have. And we have six. It's pretty obvious for most people to see that. So there are six observations. I'm also going to go through and get the sample variance, which is a fundamental measure of variation. So I'm going to hit insert function and I'm in the statistical area and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down until I find variance down in the V's and I'm with the VAR dot S for variance based on the sample. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and again select these data and it calculates the sample variance for me. Sample standard deviation I can get also and I'm going to type it equal S T E V S T DEV dot S, double click on that and I select the data and we have the sample standard deviation. Now if you wanted to do this theoretically, if I go to sample standard deviation, for example, or let's just say sample variance, and I click on the insert function and I go to help on this function, you will see, and I've got 2016 Excel, that this is the formula for calculating the variance for a sample. So I need to sum deviations from the mean squared and divide that by n minus 1 to get the variance. So we'll go ahead and x out of this and I'm going to x out of this also. Again, x bar is the mean. So if I go and for each one of the x's 20 minus 27 and use an absolute reference to make sure I always go to that spot there is the deviation from the mean. If I copy that all the way through we have the deviations from the mean for, for all six observations. So the 58 is 31 away from the mean of 27 it's in, on the positive side. 23 is four smaller or to the left of the mean x bar. So that tells all of these are deviations. They tell how far and in what direction a particular value is from the mean. It's six o'clock. Now, if I want to square deviations, I can simply hit an equal to, click on the number, and hit the caret over the six and raise it to the second power. So negative 7 squared is 49, and we copy that through. And there are all the deviations squared. You can do most of them in your head. Maybe you can do the 31. I can't. Now, if I want to calculate sample variance, I can sum the deviations. And I'm going to go to home, and I'll just put a line on the bottom of that. Let's make it a thick bottom border 
and I will sum those. And summing is a pretty common thing. I'm going to use the auto sum. And you have to be careful when you use that, but it is getting the values that I want. I'll check that. There's 1164. If I were to take 1164 and divide it by n minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, I can do this in Excel. So there's 1164. I can divide that by, I'm going to use parentheses to be careful. There's n. I'm going to subtract 1 from it. I'm going to close the parentheses, and there's your 232.8. So that is a brute force calculation, if you will, a theoretically based calculation of how to get the standard deviation, in this case the variance, using old school type methods. If I want the sample standard deviation, all I have to do is take the square root, SQRT, of the variance, and by definition, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Boom. Nailed it. Perfect. Now, I have a little model, if you will. So if I change the value of one of the numbers, for example, if I make this all of these 27s, which is the value of the mean, you'll see that there is no variation in those data and the sample variance and the sample standard deviation go to zero. The mean is still 27. I can undo all of this stuff and take them back to where they were and now you have the original data set. So that is one way to do it, brute force. But we've got better than brute force with Excel. Now I have built some formulas and you'll notice all the formulas for these values. Notice for the mean, it is the average of B5 through B10 on this particular sheet. That's where the numbers are. So I'm only dealing with these data that are in column B in rows 5 through row 10, inclusive. Now, three measures of central tendency, the mean, the mode, and the median, they are there. Sample variance, sample standard deviation, very important measures of variability is there. I constructed the range using the maximum and the minimum, or the largest and the smallest, if you will. I've got a sum, which is the sum of that column, which we did on, on the other page, or I did not do on the other page, actually. That's the sum. And then we have the count, which is another word in Excel for the number of observations that you have. Now this is a pretty good battery of descriptive statistics here, but, but Excel has a very handy and very quick battery of descriptive statistics that it will give you. If you go to the data tab and you have already added in the data analysis add-in, you can click on data analysis. And in the data analysis you get a lot of different things, correlation, I don't want that, covariance, descriptive statistics, etc. Now I'm going to want descriptive statistics. Now I have used this before, so I'm going to you know, back out of this and clear out these values. And it usually pops up that this is your default and nothing clicked down here. So that's usually what you see when you first start it. We're going to select the data and the, da and the label of, of the column. These data are in columns. I do have a label in the first row. I want to put this on the same worksheet in a certain spot. And I think that I will, I will put it right here. Now I'll have to move a box, but I'm going to put it in D12. That's where it will start. I'm going to select summary statistics. I can select the other ones, but in this case, I just want summary statistics. And I'm going to hit OK. And you'll note that we now have a pretty good listing of descriptive statistics. Mean is there, median, mode, sample standard deviation, sample variance. These are sample statistics. 
If you want population, standard deviation, population variance, you're going to have to do it differently. Skewness and kurtosis, which have to do with shape, beyond what I'm talking about here. Range, which is a measure of dispersion, and here we have the minimum and the maximum. And notice, these are numbers that it has, has generated. If you click on the box, it's just a 27. The standard deviation is just 15 out to a bunch of decimals. The same with all the other numbers. So this is a static list. To the left, the ones that we built are tied into the data the way I have it set up now. If I were to change this to 27, you'll note that everything's going to change over here. I don't even have a mode anymore because I got rid of the second 20. So realize that that is the case when you use the uh, data analysis toolkit. Now hopefully this is of use to you. You can change the data around, you can extend this, you know, insert rows, you can do anything you want and change things around and play with this. I like this sheet, the brute force sheet, because it shows how much a particular value contributes to the variance, which in turn is related to the standard deviation. So um, feel free to use this. Um, and hopefully this is helpful.